It is 8 o'clock. It is Tuesday night. Do you know where your DJ's at? I know where I'm at. I'm here with you. It's Buddy with the DJ Roundtable along with everyone else here, all the other DJs that come in and have fun and hang out and we talk about stuff and and talk about stuff right away. If you get a chance to, make sure you click the like button. Make sure you subscribe to the channel because we always have stuff going on. We always have things going on here. And also, as a side note, as well as a main note, you can look at it either way. DJ Cool Thing does have a channel up on YouTube. It is Cool Thing Entertainment. Please go to and subscribe to his channel. Uh, and again, help his channel grow. He is doing just gig logs. So it's only gig logs. Go over there, show support. Yeah, and yeah, and the reason for that is to help reach other clients. They can yep. look at my videos and hey, this guy's good. We should book him. There you Let's go. Get booking. There you go. That's why I do gig logs too. It's for customers to look at and go, okay, hey, this is what I can do. So with that said, let's start the show. Uh here today and this week, uh, again, this is the end of July in 2023, uh, and generally mid-June, July, August, beginning part of September, uh, here in Chicago, we, we got a thing called heat and humidity, and I know I have a couple DJs in the south down there, as well as Mr. Dixon, which is just to the east. Uh, we all had to deal with the heat and humidity of, of summertime, and summertime oh, yeah outdoor gigs and it's one of the things that we try to keep cool we try to you know look at hey uh it's gonna be warm out what do we need to do to keep ourselves you know cool and perform right plus how do we keep our equipment cool because i've seen tons of videos of djs laptops controllers whatever you name it that has quit on them because of the fact that it was overheated because of outside heat humidity so forth so on so with that said i'd like to know what you guys do to keep you yourself you know you hydrated and cool and then how do you keep your equipment cool so i'm going to start with dj salsas out in california which they also have some high heat i know uh death valley had what, 130 degree mm -hmm. temperature so, uh, Matt, how do you keep yourself yeah. cool and uh, how do you keep your equipment cool? Because you do a lot of outdoor weddings. Yeah, I, I don't have a shirt on right now. That's why my video is off because uh, <laughs> I just got, just got back from the gym and it's, yeah, it's boiling hot. It's 99 here today. But, uh, I mean, we this heat wave is pretty unusual for my part of Orange County. I mean, I'm in Mission Viejo, which is a little bit inland. Um, but, like, I was in San Clemente both days this weekend and – not only was it like hot, like 80, which to us is kind of hot, but it was sticky and humid and just gross. So uh, it was it was not ideal. But I mean, I I personally don't do I don't really do outdoor weddings in the summer that much because people know it's kind of hot. Um, the ones that I do are more so like dinner and ceremony or outdoors. So I don't really run a laptop for uh, either of those. So uh, I could just run my Mackies and throw my iPad with Bluetooth somewhere uh, in the shade. But I do have, um, it's called Wonder Shade. It's like, think of like a speaker stand tripod, but an umbrella comes out of the top. That's how it works. So it's got a pretty wide base. You can throw some weights on it. Uh, it goes about eight feet high, uh, nice shade. It has some little cup holders built into. So I'll put that over me and my laptop wherever I am. Luckily, I have one of those MacBook Pros from 2011 that was the last year that they made them good and the last year that they made them able to withstand 100 degree heat with no problem because they have fans and it's not a solid state. So uh, it performs just fine in direct sunlight, even at 100 degrees. Um, I do, though, like throw a fan nearby it to keep it cooler because I don't want to tax it too much if I'm in direct sunlight. But yeah, I mean, hydrate. Um, I've also got a neck fan. That is a life-saving thing. It's 30 bucks on Amazon. Definitely recommend that. Uh, some cold water. Um, I don't have one of those, like, portable air conditioner coolers that I've been seeing some people roll around. Um, but, yeah, so. It's, that's, it's, one, uh, that's one of the hard yeah, things, especially, again, doing outdoor stuff. 
uh, with gigs and stuff is having that heat and humidity. Uh, I know California, you guys don't get the humidity as much as we do in the Midwest and the South does. Uh, and again, the, you know, you being, you're saying it's hot and humid and sticky. That's what uh, we have to deal with <laughs> the high heat and the high humidity, right. which uh, makes it even worse. But uh, when you, when you do stuff, again, when you do um, your wedding, your events outside, um, as hot out, do you see a decrease in the amount of dancing if you have an outdoor wedding, or do you see it when the sun goes mm. down, the party really gets lit? Well, it depends because if dancing's inside and it's air conditioned, people are going to be inside. Um, but yeah, I mean, when it's you feel like the energy is not as much there when it's this hot, it's kind of draining. Um, but then again, it, I guess it depends because the wedding that I the last gig log I posted, it was also 100 degrees and most of the guests were in direct sunlight for dinner and they were ready to party. So I think it, it helps people drink more, I think. <laughs> and, uh, uh, which makes it always easier for them to dance. So I a little I bit know, more I, liquid, uh, lubrication, huh? I just, I, I vote for indoor venue. If you're going to do an outdoor venue, do it in the fall or the spring. Um, just hope that there's no rain and just if you're doing a summer wedding do it indoors that's that's the time to do your hotel indoor banquet center type weddings which i hate banquet centers i hate hotels they're all ugh, I, it's those kind of buildings just disgust me but um if you spend a lot of money you can make them look pretty but that's the the great part is they're indoors and air conditioned so uh more power to people that do that in the summer yeah it, it's one a couple uh we have a wedding coming up on the 12th of august um the ceremony as of right now is outside, but the couple, they're being smart and they're saying, hey, if it's hot and humid out, it's going to be inside. We're not going to go outside and have people pass, possibly pass out. I've had that happen a few weddings that people have passed out on. Uh, ben, if we get people passing out because they're nervous or whatever, knees lock and they go out, but overheating is not fun. And by the way, uh, I was talking a little before the, the start of the show here. Uh, with Cool Thing and uh, with Jeff and with uh, Dwayne here. Um, Icy, Bridge, uh, Icy Breeze is a company down in Texas. They make, it looks like an ice chest cooler with a little wheel and a handle, and it has a heat exchanger on it. So it actually takes the cold uh, ice and makes it refrigerated yeah. and blows out cold air out of a vent, and it has a fan on it. It looks, again, looks like ice chest, holds up to 30 pounds of ice, uh, so you know, three basically ten that's... pound bags of ice, unless you're putting drinks in there or something like that. That's less, but it it has a battery operator can run six and a half hours with one of the huh. battery options and keep you pretty well cool. And you have an option. I was looking through these, some of the options. They have a four foot four foot extension. So if you're more worried about your equipment than yourself, even you have that next to you blown onto your laptop and on your controller that could help the situation as well. Um, and I'm looking at it and I'm like, okay, uh, it, it's, it's not cheap. It's, you know, with a few options, you're, you're close to 500. But the thing is that what is the cost of your equipment? What's the cost of everything else? I think that is a, a good thing to have, even though you may use it maybe only a few times a year on a gig, it may be something to have in your, uh, equipment bag and then i want to go to jeff jeff i know you're there in north carolina and you have some hot weather down there as well and how do you keep cool and how do you keep your gear cool for those uh hot weather co conditions for outdoor events uh just like uh solstice I, you know i keep a uh, cooler of uh liquid with me you know it's um usually one or two bottles of water keep myself <laughs> hydrated um, if it's going to be outdoors and hot and sometimes indoors and hot, I've got a, uh, fan that, um, it's just a, um, I think it's uh, branded Lasco. It's from, uh, Amazon. It's a little thing. It's got like three speeds on it and, uh, you can tilt it up and down and, uh, it really at speed three and on the high end, it can really pump some air out and that will keep me, you know, uh, pretty cool. If it's set, set it up and blow it right on me, that, that works pretty well. Um, for the equipment, the only thing I'm really concerned about is the laptop. For my setup, um, I put the laptop on the top shelf 
of my DJ booth, which is, you know, kind of gridded. It's got, uh, it, it's not a solid shelf, but, you know, it's air can flow through it. Um, in addition to that, uh, if it's uh, really hot, I'm outside next to a pool in the sun or closer or under a tent or something. Um, I've got these ice packs that you can, I, I can slip right under the back of my computer. They're only about an inch thick by like four by six and about an inch thick or so. I can slide two of those. It jacks my the back of my laptop up just a bit and it keeps it cool. Problem is it sweats uh, during, you know, extreme heat. So you want to wrap those in like a, um, at least a paper towel. Sometimes I'll wrap them in a uh, washcloth. Uh, it, it not only jacks the back of the, um, the laptop up, but it keeps it cool. And when the fan is running on the laptop, it's just, you know, it's sucking that cold air right off that, um, that ice brick right into it. It, it helps. It, it definitely helps. Um, uh, I have never had a problem, knock on wood, uh, you know, of an overheating laptop. Uh, I'm a PC guy. So, you know, they, I, I've never had a problem, but I always want to be safe and never have that problem by, you know, doing these things. So that, that's the two things, two or three things that I use to, to try to beat the heat. And then, you know, one other thing also with everything that you're doing outside, uh, try and keep yourself cool and your equipment cool. Uh, do you try to get uh, a tent or cover? Is that part of your contract to say, hey, you know, let me be covered. I need to be in a covered area, trying to stay out of the sun as much as possible because – I don't know about you, but me, uh, I have some Irish blood in me. I like to to burn very quickly. <laughs> and yeah, um, it, it is in my contract. Uh, I I will not set up my main my main gig or my my main gear outside unless it is covered by a tent. If uh, if it is a, a situation like I just had a, a month ago where I'm playing music to the seniors at a local high school and they're set up outside, you know, just in an area of grass. So I had to set up, I brought my own tent. I've got a pop-up, you know, eight by 10. Uh, I, I use that to keep the sun off of me. Um, but yeah, I do have it in my contract that if I am, my main setup needs to be covered uh, either by a tent or, you know, something to pre prevent uh, precipitation from dropping on me. That's the main concern. Um, so, you know, if I have to bring my own for that, then, uh, you know, I will. Um, I prefer not to uh, for, for a big setup. So, and, and most of the time, if it's a, um, a big event, a wedding, they're going to be, there's going to be provided a large tent or something of that nature. But yeah, it's, that's a, a have to have is something to cover you with. And I like the idea of Solstice, it's like pop up umbrella just for a quick setup. Now, if I'm doing like a, um, I'm doing two coming up in October, uh, weddings that are outdoors, uh, they're going to be out, outside if the weather's nice, uh, in the barn if it is raining or very cold. But, uh, you know, I'm going to prepare and be ready for an outdoor uh, outside. Uh, but in October, North Carolina, you know, you might have an 80 degree day. You could have a 40 degree day. You never know. So you won't know until uh, a couple of days before. But uh, but in that situation, um, it's just a small setup for the ceremony. So I'm not concerned with overheating because it's just an iPad uh, um, speaker. You know, it's a portable battery operated speaker, Mackie. And that's, that's you know, not going to have a problem in heat. So, yeah, that, that situation, I may look at something like the pop-up umbrella. Okay. Yeah, that, that's actually a cool thing. And Matt actually sent me the link to... All of us. The, yeah, he sent all of us that link. It's yeah, a, he sent the a, link a, for Amazon. Um, I had to get that a little bit later. Um, which that so is can, something that I don't really need because I got my own 10 by 10 tent. And, and, and uh, Hunter, because you're in South Carolina... Well, Hunter, because yeah, you're in me. South Carolina, you're in South Carolina, uh, and you get some good heat as well. Uh, I, I know you get the tent. Uh, I saw in your uh, pictures for your car show you did. How do you keep I, cool? And, and also the gig log. Also the gig log. And the gig log too. How do you keep cool? How do you uh, how do you fight the heat down there by you? Well, for the outdoor gigs, um, I bring a little 
cooler with water and Gatorade, but there's no ice because and when it's out in the heat, it gets hot and I got to drink hot water, hot Gatorade. So I'm not I'm, I don't really I'm not that lucky to have ice in a cooler just to keep it cool because once it's hot, it gets hot. Well, when you when you did uh, some music at Sam's Corner, you were able to, uh, was, of course, uh, was, part, yeah, partake was, and get ice there and gain water there, right? Yeah, because yeah, it was an indoor gig, not an outdoor gig. It's, it's an indoor gig, but it's so, all glass. Got be still got to be pretty warm in that area. <laughs> oh yeah, especially being over by the fryers and the you know the grill and all that stuff. You know, with all that heat, yeah. It, it's pretty hot in there in Sam's corner. Oh yeah. And then uh Dwayne, what about you out there in Ohio? How do you how do you fight the heat when you're out there doing a uh let's say uh because you because you're a Midwest guy, block parties, which uh you know uh, Midwest guys always have block bar- block parties. Uh, I know uh, DJ Brentley, you know he's from North Oaks, he's from Chicago. Uh those outdoor parties that they pop up and uh be a birthday party, be it whatever, uh, a wedding, how do you fight the heat with for your equipment and yourself? Well, I have a um, tent that I uh, stay under, and then I have two like USB um, fans that blow like right at me. But then my laptop is on; it's always on top of a, um, one of those pads with the fans underneath that's always blowing air. So I have that going. Have some water, and that's basically. I just try to stay in the uh, shade as much as possible. Yeah, when it comes to my gear. I stopped using my computer when I said enough's enough. I'm sick and tired of my computer freezing up. So I bought me the new Mark Mix String Pro. Just have a standalone controller for a lot of outdoor gigs because this thing has like a heat sink fan like right over here. And I have no problem with that. Even in a 100 degree heat, it still does a really good job. And that may, that that that's always an option as well with a certain equipment that it can operate without a PC. That you can do that. So, uh, Mr. Late to the Party, <laughs> who's busier than than all heck, was it another car show today, sir? Uh, no, uh, Mira decided that she wanted to stop at the mall on the way home. You know, she's what, uh, 12, 13, that age? She's 10. Oh, okay, she's 10. sorry, but she's becoming a she, tween. But she had to go. Yeah. Yeah. Mall rats so, uh, we the had corner. to get her. I got three things from Alta. Drunk Elephant Cleanser, Florence Horse uh Poor Max, and then uh Touchland hand sanitizer. Yep. <sighs> yeah, that's where so, that's where my sister shops as well, Alta. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and Tracy <laughs> shops at Alta as well. She loves all it seems like that for for young ladies is uh the place to go and it, they have great stuff. Yeah. I, and I'll tell you. Now grab it here, because I actually have it right here in front of me. Uh, my one of the clones I wear Fahrenheit from Dior. This is from Alta, so um, I, this is one of my favorite clones. I you know where, that's why I wear. So if you ever want to know what, uh, if you're run to me, you don't know what I smell like. Uh, Fahrenheit's one of the uh, clones I wear. <laughs> uh, <laughs> But, you know, it, it's one of the things that uh, stopped me there on a hot day like today, because I know it's hot down here and you're just, uh, you know, you're you're north and west. You're you're far from distance from me because you're not directly north, but you're also yep. suffering the same heat and humidity we're running into down here in Chicago. Uh, how do you yeah. beat the heat for your equipment as well as for yourself? I mean, the first thing I did was booking this year and going into next year. I'm Unless you're paying me for my premium package, I'm just not taking outdoor weddings anymore. It's 100% just not worth it to me. And not to sound cocky or pretentious with it, but outside, you know, especially in some of these newer barns. And last year, I learned a lot of lessons that I thought I knew going into, you know, last year, rustic occasions in Loyola, Wisconsin. But... I'm trying to, I, I won't necessarily avoid them, but I don't want to do them anymore. And with that, I have one coming up in a few weeks and they wanted, you know, the entire premium, everything out of me. So I was really up for it and I know what I'm getting into. Staying cool. Well, I, you see how I dress. That's how I'm going to be in the barn or not. 
I'll have a fan under my table, but I, I guess part of it was the martial arts training for a long time. You kind of get used to it if you can't tolerate it. And if you really think about it, our ancestors hundreds of years ago had to deal with heat like this and didn't have any of the amenities we had. So if we can't as humans handle it, we're doing something wrong, I personally think. A couple of my really good friends say I need to hydrate more when I'm doing these weddings that are, you know, if I have to, an outdoor day of 12 to 13 hours, that's my biggest downfall. I might only get, you know, have two big bottles of water and then I'll have a four pack of energy drink, which technically is supposedly dehydrates you, but the masses I'm putting down at that point, whatever. It's keeping me going and it's making it sure I get through their day. But well, yeah, so I have a fan. You're down to four energy drinks for a gig? Man. <laughs> Dang. Well, if you think about Thursday, I, if, if I have a Friday wedding or a Friday club gig, Thursday I'm getting home at, you know, getting to bed at five in the morning. I'll get up at 11 or noon and, I, you know, on a day of a wedding. And now I got to go all the way through plus loading and unloading. Unlike a club gig, I can sleep in until three or four in the afternoon if I really want to. Just get up, throw some clothes on, and head on out. Those are so much easier in the in the general scheme of things. But with weddings, yeah, uh, I want to be on my A game. So whatever it takes to keep me, you know, especially when people are starting to fade, and you will see this, I think more so in the Midwestern weddings, because we tend to push everything back until later, so to speak. Like, you have no formal touching the dance floor until their first dances. So at that point in the day, no one's actually had a chance to say hi to each other really or commiserate except for, you know, 45 minutes of social hour. And with the weather as it is, for example, in Wisconsin, it can, it can be 40 degrees out and sunny. It can be 105 degrees out and sunny. And until the sun goes down, everybody's going to congregate outside the party. It doesn't matter if you're in an indoor venue with an outdoor patio or if you're in an outdoor venue that has like a courtyard outside of the main pavilion where you're set up at. People aren't going to be ready to get going to dance 90% of the time when it's as hot out. And like this weekend, I had an air conditioned barn, which actually kind of backfired because it was so cold in the barn. People wanted to go outside just to warm up. So I had a good hour where they open the doors just to get some air in the place so it would warm it up a little bit until, until people got you know liquored up a little got the beer muscles and the beer heat going and started wanting to dance and so i had that first hour where you could tell anybody over 50 was outside trying to warm up and everybody inside was still trying to catch their buzz on or in the photo booth being obnoxious so that's the other side of it but in wisconsin if this Soon as you can go outside to drink, or you know, they're in put your barbecue grill up. It's outdoor drinking time, and especially around lacrosse, where it's kind of embedded into the culture because of City Brewery being the old Highlands Old Style Brewery. The town basically thrives around the brewery and the university. So what goes hand in hand with it all is the drinking. So drinking plays a huge scope. It doesn't matter if you're in an outdoor bar in an indoor you know, posh venue, until people are good and liquored up around here, they don't want to hit the dance floor. Now, some days they will be liquored up by the time they hit dinner and kind of push through dinner just to get going. But it doesn't matter hot or cold. They want it. You have to kind of play that ebb and flow game up here. So old style beer came from uh, lacrosse, huh? Correct. So, I love his brewery. Uh, so uh, Harry Carey, you're again, you're a Cubs fan and I'm a, White Sox fan here. And it is Crosstown Classic here in Chicagoland. Sox and Cubs play tonight if you're not Chicagoan. You, you know you know what you know. Um, and Cubs. one of the things Harry Carey always uh, drank his old style, and he always uh, talked about old style. That, that was their go-to beer at yep. uh, Wrigley for many, many, many years. Um, and then uh, – oh, yeah. Of course, uh, the Sox, they, they they went through a bunch of different beers. I don't know what's at Wrigley right now. I had to ask my daughter. She was just, just there uh, this past week. She got tickets from one of her clients. Um, one of her customers came in and gave her some tickets. So she uh, went and because uh, my daughter's a, a bartender at uh, a restaurant. 
and um, she took uh, our granddaughter and went to the, uh, the Cubs game. I, I I don't think she drank, but she probably saw the beer and we passed out. I think Miller is like the, the go-to now for most ballparks. Uh, the Sox did had uh, Modelo. Uh, that was their beer. Uh, I don't know what I don't know what it is now. Again, I, and I don't drink, so it doesn't matter. But here's one of the things. To, speaking of drinking, and I know DJ Brentley, you in the land of cheese has a lot to deal with uh, with beer. It's beer and cheese up there in Brat. So those are the three things Wisconsin is known for. But we all deal with it at events. People drinking excessively and fights. And I just sent out to you guys a video that happened down in the city of Chicago of a fight um, uh, between two weddings um, that Chicago police came and, you know, they broke it up. And um, I don't know if any charges were done against the people who did it or whatever, but uh, the police showed up to, uh, it was outside on the street uh, between two groups. And they were both coming from, I guess, both coming from weddings or both going to weddings. It looked like later at night, uh, I don't have all the information, but, uh, you could probably find it uh, fairly easy. If you're at a wedding and you see shenanigans like that breaking out with between a fight or something like that. Um, oh, yeah. I know something very similar because right towards the end of my cousin Cheyenne's wedding back in November of 2021, a fight broke out. And I was like, <laughs> I'm staying away from that. I'm staying away <laughs> That's 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 one thing we all have to do is stay away and protect ourselves, uh, and protect yeah, our because, equipment. But my because, when, what what is your procedures if you see something like that happening? Do you turn the music off? Do you make an announcement? Do you say nothing? Just turn the music off and wait for if you have a place that has security or management or law enforcement to show up or something else and just stay out of the way. How do you usually handle? those kind of situations. I'm going to go with Matt in California uh, first because the fact that uh, Matt uh, was uh, uh, getting ready there. Uh, Matt, you still there? Yeah, Matt, you're not uh, not ready. Yeah, I'm here. I'm okay. here. I just got off the show. Um, oh. <laughs> fight? I, I keep the music going. Until somebody tells me to turn it off, uh, I just let them fight and, you know, they fight, they fight. I'm not getting involved. It ain't my problem. If any security comes up to me and says, hey, we got to cut the music, <laughs> cut the music but uh usually I, i've only ever seen one fight at a venue and they let it go the first time they kind of calmed it down and then a half hour 45 minutes later they got crazy and then the venue manager was like no we got to shut this wedding down they're getting kicked out so the whole wedding was getting kicked out not just the people fighting so yeah, and uh, as I, was, well, I was happy about that i know i have in my contract if something's unsafe or whatever we can shut down an event at any time uh, we feel our safety is in jeopardy or our equipment's in jeopardy. But what do you, uh, if a, a venue comes to you and says, hey, you know, this is an excessive amount of uh, shenanigans, um, we need to shut down this uh, event, uh, what do you tell the uh, the people who threw the event, be it the couple or be it uh, the party year or be it the birthday person or whoever? What do you usually, do you usually explain to them, hey, the facility <laughs> said, uh, that's it, cut it out? and Yeah. I mean, that's that happened to me once uh, when I did a bar mitzvah a while ago. And the, it wasn't so much the kids that, well, the kids were jumping on the furniture. They were There was a lot of expensive cars at this venue. It was like a classic car kind of warehouse. And so they weren't damaging them, but they were jumping on the furniture. They were throwing shit. They were, it was all bad. And so the venue owner like went over to the parents and, and told them, hey, you need to calm your kids down. And otherwise we're going to have to shut this down. And they didn't and they ended up shutting it down and so like the the person hosting the event came to me and said oh just just keep it low maybe they'll let us turn it back up and and resume the party after the kids leave and i was like okay but we're gonna start tearing down because the venue manager said it's it's over so i i left the music i'm like in case it comes back on at least you know the sound system is still connected but uh that's the only time and it wasn't a fight but there's and the cops got called at the end of the night because one of the caterers was being really creepy with some of the kids and I don't know. I, I don't. I didn't get involved. It wasn't my business. Yeah, but, that's uh, that's be, that's beyond your your scope yeah, of. Uh, yeah, that's beyond your. Yeah, scope I mean, they of, paid me uh, a lot of work. They paid. They paid me a lot of money, so I was like, you know, I'll I'll give them whatever I could give them, but if you know, if we're done, we're done. That's you know, not my problem. No refunds. 
So Jeff, I know your area out there in uh, North uh, North Carolina, uh, if you run into, uh, I don't know if you have run into it or if you do run into a event that goes awry, what is uh, what is your normal procedures with everything? You know, I've never run into it. I've never had a fight break out at an event. Um, you know, I've I've had some disruptive behavior from 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 guests you know just to me you know you, you're you're not playing the right music you're not playing you know you need to be playing this that and the other i requested this and you're not you know you're not uh, playing it so uh, it, it doesn't really affect me that much for you know like fighting i've never i don't run into that so but if it does you know I, i'm kind of i'll just um the, the quickest way to grab everyone's attention is to shut the music off and uh, let the attendees handle it and, or the security handle it. Uh, and then and then bring the music back up to let everybody know that, um, hey, we're back on track. That's how I would do it. Um, and at least it gives some people the, the, the feeling that, okay, something was done. Uh, we're back to normal now. So, but uh, I can see Solstice's uh, view to just keep playing. Sure, that that might be an option depending on what's going on. But uh, you know, in my contract, it says um, uh, that everyone shall treat uh, the DJ with respect. Any any uh, thing that I deem um, you know uh, dangerous to me or my equipment, I have the right to shut the event down or shut the music down. Yeah, you know, event can continue as, as as it wants without the music. But uh, yeah, actually it's written that I will give one warning uh, and on a second warning, I have the option to shut uh, shut the music down. So, but that's, I've never had to come across that. Me neither, well, especially with my last wedding because I was at the end of the night and just people like wanting to, wanted to give me song requests even though we weren't allowed to play song requests and they just gave me a very weird look yeah people get sometimes get a little you know they have a little bit of adult beverages they uh can't get a little honorary oh, yeah. on their uh requests and be a little uh pushing on that and that's that's oh, one well, of the things that can't. Yeah, at least my cousin try to keep it to where they drink responsibly but uh, they don't listen <laughs> of course not well, again, you're, but, you're, but you're, but your mostly, your yeah, cousin's but, not responsible yeah. for them. You know, they're they're adults. No. They're drinking. They need to take responsibility for themselves. Um, no. DJ Brantley. Other than that, uh, uh, other than that, the rest of my gigs have been very smooth, very well behaved people, very well behaved guests, and yeah. DJ Brantley, what about you? I know uh, you probably have had a few. Uh, being in Wisconsin, you said uh, about drinking. Uh, you maybe have a few yeah. people that. Uh, were disrupted to say the least at a uh, event i've seen and it got really bad when we reopened in 2020 because wisconsin had the head start on most states in our direct area because we i can tell you the exact date and time may 20th uh 23rd 2020 at 4 30 p.m the government issued that we can reopen they've been sued and lost so Everybody can go back to business. And since then, I have definitively seen a digression in how people behave. And over the course of that summer alone, there I want to say I saw 12 ambulances from overdrinking, getting too hot. Uh, one, the groom got drugged, and I had La Crosse County Sheriff, La Crosse Pol the city of lacrosse cops the town of campbell fire a truck ambulance and so when that happens we're done they officer came in at 10 20 you're done now right i faded off i'm like yep we're done here uh with fights it really depends where it happens and how it happens uh at celebrations a couple like two months ago my business partner was in one of the smaller rooms and i was in the main room and the fight got so bad that he had to jump from behind his booth to protect his gear as the fight broke out on the dance floor and wound up going through a window in the other room, actually. Uh, so cops got called. When that, If it gets that out of hand, one, I'm obviously getting in front of my gear and I'm just turning everything off. If it happens outside the venue, like 
a few weeks ago when you could hear members of the wedding party were that drunk and they're just, you know, swearing and slapping each other around. And I could hear the screaming over music in the main room. That's when I just pulled the plug, turned everything off. And I'm like, we're done here, right? Knowing that that was the reception ender at nine o'clock. But in the club scenario, it's very different because they don't want anybody really leaving except for the problem folks. So in the club scenario, when a fight breaks out, I will definitely lower the music. Something I'm notorious for doing is putting something like Many Rippertons loving you on the speakers and putting that on a low on a low volume or like Spice Girls wannabe. And it's songs you cannot fight to. And at that point, if they're going at it hard and you put something that stupid on, somebody's going to stop and be like, what is this? Enough for your door staff to get in there and s- grab hands, grab arms, all of that to stop the fight. And th- I've seen several fights on my dance floors, you know, beer muscles, college boys. It happens kind of frequently in downtown lacrosse. And when that, I will bring the music down and definitely put something stupid on in the background. Or and New Year's Eve after the last fight broke out and it was at five in the morning or five fifteen, bar staff looked at me, call it. Okay, we're done. That's it. And it just depends on where in the night it's at. So, but when fights do break out, I tend to either a if I have to get on a mic, call for door staff in a club or at a wedding. I'm just shutting all the music down, seeing how it all plays out. And of course, if I see things. Like because I'm at celebration so much, and that's you know kind of a wedding factory, and be it as it may, it might be a great venue, but it's gotten known that well they're on French Island just outside of Lacrosse. What happens there isn't going to really matter because it's kind of secluded in the set in the aspect that it's not on the beating strip of anything in Lacrosse, so you're kind of out of the way. When anything happens there or start, I start seeing things, I will immediately grab manager, like the wedding where they turned the floor in, the beer, floor into a slip and slide with beer and broke chairs. When the beer slip and slide started, I ran to a manager. By the time I got back from talking to her, chairs were in the middle of the dance floor broken and we were done. She just said, we're done. So I, when it starts getting out of hand, and the other thing I will do is I will bring my music back. I will, if I'm pumping hard, be it high energy dance music or those, you know, jump along, sing along kind of songs like Bright Side, anything that gets some really amped up, I will pull that back as far as I can without being super obvious. Like I'll throw on Backstreet. I want it that way. Anything that will bring the tempo or, and the energy or, or, down. Or you can put on My Chemical Romance. Welcome to the Black Parade. Not up here. You can't. That will get the kids going. Uh, that is still one of the songs. And at, for example, at the college clubs I'm in, I play that line of, you know, one, don't play any more than three songs in any one genre. Continually move your BPMs upward and upward. So when I get near the tail end of, a you know, like my 90 minute up and down run, I'm looking at bright side, black parade, things that are guitar driven. And so I can make that smooth transition and drop without making, you know, back down to 70 beats a minute and start over. So a lot of those things that are, you know, anthem esh, you know, uh, Black Parade, uh, Sugar, We're Going Down Swinging, uh, all that stuff, I work into part of my college party set, so to speak. And they go off flawlessly. So when it comes to breaking up a fight, I definitely want to bring that noise level and all the chaos kind of bring it back down. And then the Backstreet Boys, yeah, I wanted that way. That's a good song. So you're you're, you're not anything playing, like that here. You're not you're not playing stuff that uh, basically uh, make it into a a fight into a mosh pit and have people join in. You know, they don't want that. You want to bring the temperature down a little bit, and that that I think that's exactly a, that's a key thing there. And getting uh, Wisconsin is uh, Wisconsin is very lacrosse. Good. I, lacrosse is buck wild compared to anyone around us. So what flies up here, you can't get away with in Madison, Milwaukee, Green Bay. It just wouldn't happen. Whereas anywhere along like what they call the Driftless or Cooley region of the state, what's a law? It's 
a variable. And you know, more often than not, you're dealing with county sheriffs that if you call, you've got a good hour wait for them to show up in the boondocks. Just like if you're in the outskirts of Illinois, like going to Ottawa, for example. And uh, if you do Star Rock Lodge, that's a great example. You can call the cops, but it's going to take them a half an hour to get just into the lodge area, just through parking lot and the roadways. So that's something you know to keep in mind when you see things brewing, how to kind of squash it before it gets going. You know what? I think the next time I see a fight, I might just play some crazy worship music and see if that'll work. Because that's slow. And Carl Douglas, everybody was kung fu fighting. I there you go. The, there uh, you go. Throw in that. <laughs> <laughs> Throw in that. <laughs> I, I still think those stupid girly songs or something as beautiful, like I said, as many Ripperton's loving you, how can you even throw a It's like watching a scene on a Deadpool. <laughs> watching somebody throw a punch to loving you. And I've seen it because it was outside the bar one night when the owner had told me to stop, you know, like we're going to sh- wrap up, play something chill to get everybody out. As soon as they got out the door, they were slugging on each other. And in the bar, I've got loving you, and I'm watching them fight. It was the most surreal thing I've ever seen. I mean, here's my pro tip for everyone. Just play slow, praise and worship Christian music. That would work, too. <laughs> So, uh, Dwayne, over there in Ohio, my uh, more eastern, midwestern friend, <laughs> if you had a situation where, again, uh, people got out of hand, uh, what do you usually do? How do you shut it down? How do you how do you handle it uh, if someone is uh, being unruly at, at an event you're doing? It depends. Um, if the if it's happening on the outskirts, I just keep going business as usual but if it's right there right in the middle i try to change the vibe maybe it's the song i definitely wouldn't play no hype you know get them sturdy kind of songs because that most of my fights will happen more so with the kids so i know there are certain songs to stay away from so i try to keep the music going as and try to try to handle it as discreetly as possible without having to like pull everything down or that's get on the mic and saying something. But I've just been lucky so far. I haven't had any. And that, that that's great because, uh, you know, it's only happened with me maybe once and I never want to see that ever again. Uh, seems, it seems like uh, DJ Brantley, it's like a weekly event by him <laughs> and we're across. They might, maybe they probably play, uh, either wedding or bar uh, fight bingo. And, you know, they have their bingo card. You pull the bingo card out and starts checking off what's uh, what's there. Uh, and then again, Dwayne, I know yet you, you have your, your regular career as a, uh, as a teacher and you have to sometimes deal with unruly students in your class and you have to overcome that. And you, you know, uh, you have to kind of, you know, nurture it a little bit sometimes, you know, talking them down off the edge so they don't get themselves in trouble. And maybe sometimes that, you know, again, you have a great perspective on that. And, you know, being a parent, just like a few of us are here, parents, uh, just like you and, you know, being a teacher and stuff, I, I think that also helps play into that and that that thought of let's take the stuff down. And again, uh, Bradley, Jeff, you know, even cool thing, putting stuff in there that's really more relaxed and chill uh, vibe music, you know, that way people are not getting hyped up and, you know, playing stuff that's uh, – you know, maybe it's, uh, you know, uh, something that's like, you know, dust in the wind or something like that, you know, throw that in there, you know, and just uh, let them be like, what? Dust in the wind? Why, why is dust in the wind coming on for, you know, little Kansas there just to, just to like throw them or, uh, uh, you know, a song for mama from, uh, you know. Uh, boys and Men? Yeah, Boys and Men, you know, or uh, actually uh, I just had someone do Tupac. Uh, they have a wedding come up. Um Mama from Tupac. So, you know, do like do like that, you know, throw that in there, <laughs> throw a little Tupac, but it's mama. It's like, okay, you know, so that way just just throw that ice on that uh on that fire to cool it down. And that's I mean, you know it, it, it's it again with high temperatures, you run into uh uh people getting upset very quickly, and that's the other thing. Our, ourselves keep ourselves cool. I feel is another important thing because that right there is going to help us make sure we keep a level head if a situation does arise. But not only that, it keeps us more friendly to 
the clientele. If you're hot, you're bothered, and you're out there, it, it can really, you know, kind of wreck your night because you're uncomfortable. And no one wants to stand there um, sweating and trying to do stuff. And people are coming up to you, hey, why don't you play a song? Well, hey, why don't you play a song? Hey, why don't you play a song? And you don't want to, you know, snap at them. You just want to say, okay, hey, dude, or okay, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll get to it. Don't worry about it. I got you covered. And then, you know, decide yes or no, you know, if you're going to get to it. But, you know, I do know uh, DJ Brantley. He usually wears his cape um, when he DJs. So uh, he's always uh, standing in front of his gear as a Superman ready to fly off and save uh, the day of a wedding. So, uh, <laughs> and if you haven't done so already, make sure you follow everyone here on social media because they all have YouTube channels and they have great stuff. And once in a while, you'll catch uh, DJ Brantley where he stands. It, it's it's sometimes some of the pictures he gets um and on uh, social media instagram and facebook uh just the way it is it looks like his scrim looks like a cape and he's standing with his arms crossed like you know uh, a superman from the uh the 50s and 60s uh i just need to see the s on his chest and that's it you know he's he's rocking it yeah. out uh but you know it, it's it's one of the things that also with what we do and how we do things uh, let me ask you this last question. I'll go around real quickly. And this is going to be a, a quicker one. We only got uh, uh, about 10 minutes left, so we can't go really in depth with it. Um, it's more or less a yes or no kind of thing and see if it's happened to you. Uh, like it has happened to Tracy and I uh, at events and venues. Uh, we've been at events and venues that when the event ends, let's say it's 11 o'clock ending, <laughs> midnight ending whatever time it is it's in the summertime we've had venues turn off the air conditioning so you start breaking down it just happened to us a few weeks ago at a venue down in the city um venue wedding ended at 11 o'clock 11 05 we're breaking stuff down and i'm pouring sweat you know and i'm i'm not i'm not a small guy i'm a big guy i'm a, I'm a big fat guy so you know it's like me sweating it is it's bad because I'm like, man, I sweat's going in my eyes. I got, you know, I'm pulling out the, uh, you know, paper towels, trying to write my eyes and like it's burning and stuff. I'm like, this is not fun. Why did the air conditioning go off? And, you know, the manager there is like, oh, I'm, they're apologizing. But, you know, the owner of the facility decides, hey, at 11 o'clock, you're done. We're going to turn the air conditioning off, especially on a hot, humid summer day after a rainstorm that was raining all day. So we're going to make sure you boil and sweat very heavily inside of a building. No airflow. Uh, it, has that happened to you? So I'm going to start with uh, Dwayne this time. Have you been in a venue where they actually cut off the air conditioning at a certain time when you're basically breaking down? Uh, I want to say, yeah, even though it when it's time to break down, I'm usually tired and sweaty anyway. So it's like I really couldn't tell, but they do do stuff like either when it's almost time like like in a restaurant or something they'll turn the air conditioning up real high they make it uncomfortable so to get people out so if it's no more than turn on lights more lights than usual but yeah they do stuff like that okay jeff has that happened to you in your uh events no i've never had that happen to me but uh, i'll look forward to it <laughs> oh, hopefully you don't. <laughs> I don't want. To, I don't want to see that happening. Uh, Matt, has that happened to you that a venue, when you do an inside event, uh, turn off the uh, AC on you? No, because they're also breaking down, so they want to stay cool. Okay, okay. DJ Brantley, what about like, you? Have you had that happen more than once? There are some venues that are just like you said. We're done at 11, 11 to 1, that AC gets shut off. Everybody, please get out now. We're not making this hospitable for you anymore. And th then what the other part of that is, once everybody's out, you will see the cleaning crew come in and turn the air back on. So you get, if you can, you know, if it takes you that long to tear apart, like for one of some of my bigger setups, then yeah, we're getting back to the air conditioning so I'm not dying in the last 10 minutes of it all. Okay, cool thing. What about you? Have you run into air conditioning being cut off? Nope, not really. Just like DJ Jeff Johnson, um, 
mean, we were both from the Carolinas and everybody is packing up and we need the air conditioning. So I've never really had that experience. I, I think I need to move the Carolinas then because you can keep the air on versus up here. They like they flip that switch at, you know, they've t- set 1105 air conditioning off, you know, out the door. Uh one thing uh, we did get a question from our last video, and I did send it to you guys, uh, asking about crates. And with, uh, let me pull that video up real quickly here. Uh, yeah. Nope, that's not the one I want. Uh Uh, is there a good video or can someone on a video, uh, show how to copy a crate and music from one external hard drive to a new hard drive? I bought a new SSD, ex- uh, external, and I seem to be missing a step and not able to move everything over. So he's got a hard drive. You want, maybe it was, uh. Amazon crazy deals bought another nice full four terabyte hard drive and My trying to drive copy out. from one hard drive to another hard drive. And he's moving his crates over. And I'm guessing Serato. So this is, a, or it could be record box. Um, and it's trying to move crates over. Uh, I know uh, Jeff, you and I are virtual DJ guys. I don't run crates. I don't know if you run crates on your virtual DJ, uh, but do you uh, just folders? Folders, yeah. yeah. It's the same thing as crates, but they're super simple. I mean, I can, you know, just they're, they're stored in my documents folder on my PC. And, you know, I just go in, copy those, take them to my backup PC, and, you know, just put them right in that same folder. And everything is there. So it's who, who, who really has four, like, who has that much music? Like, I've I got 11,000 songs and I'm barely at like a couple hundred gigs. Not more. My There's heart, no, like, you, sh- you my- shouldn't need. You shouldn't heart need heart that. Heart. Like that's crazy. Yeah, my I heart mean, heart so loud. for my for all the different types of gigs I do, I probably have on my main hard drive that goes with me to gig sixty thousand songs, and I will purge that once a year, maybe once every other year. But like for the EDM and house club clubs I'm at, I've got you know those crates that each have fifteen hundred songs a piece in them, plus you know everything else I'm doing. So I definitely have to work out of different crates and to answer your question for record box crossfader and record box itself the app uh on their website have some really great videos of how to transfer your playlists or your crates however you want to call them and keeping your cue points the only thing you can't transfer them within record box is video uh i don't understand why you can't do that with video why it won't let you merge the two for a crate transfer to another computer. But if you're only running MP3s, Rekordbox has a couple of different ways to do it. You can even do it with iTunes and turning it into an M3 U8 and transferring it back into the computer that way. Uh, But there are a few different ways to do it. Crossfader again or Rekordbox website will have a couple of different ways from transferring the entire library to transferring crate by crate. But like I said, you just can't do video, which is kind of why I've opted now when I'm in the clubs I'm at that do have video, I just have a crate of background videos that I'm running off of now. And it's just animate images that go with the song I'm playing and that's it. Just to save hard drive space and to make it, if my main laptop crashes or has any problems, I can back it up on, you know, have everything in my backup with no issues already. <laughs> So it it makes it a little easier. Yeah, same thing goes with Engine DJ. Engine DJ, I can easily drag and drop my entire music library into Engine DJ. Some of the playlists will get automatically saved to this hard drive, and the rest I can do. And I can play the music from the folders within the Mixstream Pro. Yeah, I know. I know, and, a, virtual, I, I know a virtual DJ, uh, Jeff. Uh, I don't. You've done it. I just click and drag the folders, bring the folders over to a new hard drive. And Matt, just to let you know, I also have music videos in that it's a four terabyte hard drive, 
I have probably uh, two and three quarters of hard drive. I much rather have more space now than say, hey, I don't have enough space later. And it was a heck of a deal. Uh, this is a water resistant SSD drive from Samsung. It's four terabytes. And it was like a hundred and hundred eighty bucks, hundred seventy bucks on uh, I mean, Amazon Prime. If you got the, if you got the time to reformat it as a, uh, well, so I use all Macs, and you have to format if you're trying to copy more than like, I think it's like four gigs at a time. Yeah. You have to specially format each flash drive. Uh, I don't know how I did it once. Yeah, it's it uh, uh, um, on, on Windows is ex uh, fat. Uh, drive. I don't know if it's the same on 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 uh, Apple, but I ran into that. Yeah, that's something different. That... But that's that's just my 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 MacBook Pro has a. I mean, I upgraded it to a terabyte internal hard drive. So I mean, I've never run out of space <laughs> on there. But I, yeah, I back it up. I back up all my music like once a month to. I don't know. I think it's like a one terabyte Western. I don't know. I got it for like sixty bucks or something on Marketplace. I don't remember. But it, it works. It's got USB 3.0. Uh, yeah, that's so I don't know. Part. All these guys that buy a bunch I of got them. the Yeah. Yeah, I got the yeah. new Mac, and it's got 121 gigabytes of SSD. And this is where all my music is on a one terabyte Lacey external uh, spinning hard disk drive. Uh, my, I, my iPhone is a terabyte. That's crazy. Yeah, well, again, you take a lot of video, 4K, you put 4K video up there, you eat real quickly. I know. Uh, Dwayne, what about yeah. you, sir? Yeah. I was going to say that I saw that question and I'm in the process of finishing the video. And I'm assuming he's using Serato. And with Serato, what you want to do is go to wherever your the um, hard drive that you have your music. Because when you open up Serato, Serato automatically puts a Serato and Serato backup folder uh, near where your music library is. So if it's on the external drive, it'll be on the external drive. If it's on your actual computer, you have another Serato and Serato backup on your computer. So what I do is when I back up my um, music library, I copy the Serato folder and the Serato backup and the um, music library, and I put it all on that same hard drive. So when you unplug that hard drive, if you open up Serato without the hard drive, you have Serato without your crates. But if, when you plug in whatever hard drive with that Serato folder, Serato backup, and your music library, Serato will automatically rescan it, and then it'll be just like that. But your cr Serato crates may not be in the, the exact order of it, you know, when it was originally downloaded, but you'll still have all your crates. But I'm finishing up the video so hopefully i have it up by tomorrow okay and, and then the um thing, yeah and the key thing is to always relocate the lost files but if you do it with the serato serato it automatically will link if you put the serato it's basically the playlist pointing to where the um where your music is so if you put them put them all on the same within the same area on a hard drive and don't put them inside a folder. Keep them as the you know the the main folder. Then it will automatically link. It just take a second for Serato to um, rescan everything, but it'll work. But then okay. also another easy way is um, I use Lexicon, which is one of those programs that also have a mobile app. So basically, you will save your everything into the cloud. So you you just download it and it put everything back the way you want it. And then therefore it doesn't matter whether you have virtual DJ or using record box and automatically send out those songs in the playlist and format it into, um, wherever you're using onto wherever space you want. And it somehow magically links. And, and if it doesn't, you can always automatically relocate it and it does everything automatically. And that's one of the things I think he's trying to do is clone one drive to another drive because either he got another drive or the uh, one drive's dying. He wants to protect it. And that's that's a good thing to have is multiple hard drives. Again, I have next to me my my computer here, this is my main computer that has my big library in it. This I have one eight terabyte hard drive alone, plus the additional hard drives. I have like 12 terabytes here of hard drive space. Um but I buy 
and I have a few of these four terabyte hard drives and like I'll, I'll go through and format this on virtual DJ for all the music, but like, you know, video I have backed up here. I have the videos I do here for uh, the DJ round table, those edited videos and raw video on here too. So I, I try to back everything up. I possibly can in redundancies in case something should go down. The computer goes down. I get a new computer tomorrow. How do I recover all that music? How do I recover all the information? I, you know, all the thousands of dollars we all spend on music. We don't want oh, to yeah. lose that. So yeah, that's the only thing I have. I actually had a Toshiba hard drive, but that died on me. So this is all I have left. This one terabyte lacy hard drive. And, and when again, this is that's, full, that, that's a good thing to have. I would definitely would say a uh, cool thing. Uh, buy another one when you get a chance to and have two. Because, you know, it, two is better than one. I, you know, protect your investment. So with that said, I appreciate you guys in here tonight. And I appreciate everything that you guys do. Thank you all the DJs for being in tonight. Hopefully it answers your question, uh, DJ Aga, as far as the um, crates. And again, Dwayne, if you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to his channel. He is going to work on a video. Make sure you smash that like button. Make sure you follow the channel. And make sure that you get any more uh, comments, critiques, criticisms, tomfoolery. Put that down below, and we'll see you in the next episode of the DJ Roundtable. Peace out.